Yeah, off you go. Thanks. So I'm Juan. I'm from the University of Hamburg, and I'm currently writing my master's thesis on HPC and Docker. So um, I have this talk structured in two big parts. Um, first of all, I will show uh, with two small examples how I think Docker can be used for for software for HPC software development. And then in the second part, um, I will show what I'm currently working on. So it's a work in progress. And um, there will, I will show what problems emerge if you try to move this development process from a local machine into a production um, environment. OK, so normally um, Docker is used for configuration management, uh, deployment, continuous integration, delivery. and um, you can use this configuration management and deployment part to quickly deploy HPC applications because they're time consuming to set up, to port, um, you have to wait on resources on your cluster, and you have a long test and modify cycle. By the way, I will fly through the first part so we can have a Q&A session on, on the second part since there was some interest. So, Docker as a local development environment um, you can use the configuration management aspect of Docker to have uh, an environment set up that can build, run, and test an application. So you have just a single, a single image and a single container. And the interesting part I'm, or a little, a little trick I'm doing is uh, I add a user to the, to the Docker image, just a build user, give it a work deal, and then when I start the Docker container, it gets um, a user mod for a certain UID and switches the user into the build user. So um, to solve this problem, when you are running a Docker container and you want to access your files on your local machine, you just set your current UID to the UID of the build user and you can access all your files without any conflicts. So let's have a little uh, live demo. So here's the Docker run commander for it. Um, it's just that it runs interactive and um, I'm mounting the current working gear as the working gear of the build user. I'm passing over my UID to get uh, read and write permissions to the files and I'm running the Docker container. In this case, it's called BuildBox. So I run it, I get access to the work gear and I have a hello world C. This is inside my, my Docker container. And I can, can run GCC, LOC, execute it, and I have compiled a, um, a little program in my Docker container. This is not fancy, but this one is, uh, is, my, um, is my local local machine. And here is the C file from the from the Docker container above, I just compile, and now I can um, I can edit it if I want to. Just don't know, add another O to it, right quit it, go back inside my inside my uh, container, recompile it, and the output changed. So I have working wor uh, um, working uh, in development environment on my, my in my container, and I can change my files on my local machine, which just can means I can use a graphical IDE with tab completion with all the fancy features I want, and test and run it inside a pre-configured Docker container. Maybe on, just to make sure everyone is up to speed, what, what he's doing and what we are talking about. So by changing the UID of the user inside of the Docker container, he's tampering with his files in his home directory with his own UID. So if you, maybe if you start the container with UID equals 500 or something, so just to check if you're in the above. And just to, to show the difference. So now if I want to... If you, uh, if you compile it and then, sh then illustrate that ls minus l is a different, uh, different UID then. So and now, and now it's run against a different UID. The uh, permission changed from 1,000 to 10,000. Okay, so that's, you can use Atom or whatever preferred uh, editor you have on your Mac or what have you and then 
compile it within a certified or within an environment that everyone is using, and then you have the same result for all developers by using your own fancy editor like Emacs or Vim or Atom or what have you, right? Okay. So, and I can, I can increase this. <coughs> I can use it for HPC applications. So now I'm using the configuration management aspect, uh, the deployment aspect, and run a single or multiple image setup inside multiple containers. So um, the image layout I'm running is just a base image which provides a basic slum setup, and the next layer of the image um, provides a compute image with the dependencies like MPI, HDF5, NetCDF, and um, everything else you need. So, I use Docker Compose for this. What, what will happen now? I will start up um, five containers, one login node, four compute nodes, and um, again, the set UID will happen on every container, and the um, working directory will be mounted inside every contain, uh, container, so Slurm finds the necessary executables inside every container, and Slurm can work with them. Let's see. Docker compose up. So the nodes and the local nodes gets created. I can Docker uh, jump into the container. Switch my user over to the build user, and I'm inside the working deal. And here again, I can show as info I have four nodes idling, and um, I can run just a simple command. Yeah, come on. Look at that post. Yeah, 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 the number. Yeah. So I can run a, a, a simple command to make sure it's working. This is a running Slurm cluster on my laptop for development purposes. And now I can even run a uh, run MPI uh, commands in, inside of it. Uh, can everybody see this down here, or should I switch it up? Now it's gone. I uh, keep it like this. So I can I can run simple API commands inside of it. Yeah. Here. And to export term external. Yeah. Oh come on. So now I can um, I have um, Wolf um, compiled for this. And I have Wolf running inside this container, but the files are actually accessible from my host machine. So I can, I can, um, I can run Wolf, modify it, recompile it inside the container, container, and um, then uh, run it. Ideal exit, and it starts up, and it's running. I will interrupt it so it doesn't take too much long time. So I have a local development cluster. I can set up any environment for any application I like. I can distribute this image to my uh, fellow developers or to other people who just want to test this um, Docker image on the machine and they can run it, get the, uh, get the application they want, and un unpack it, run the setup, compile it, and test it locally without having to compile a lot of uh, libraries, dependencies. And if you, maybe, maybe if you're not familiar with, with a certain program, you maybe need half a day or a day to set up your whole environment to get a, an HPC application up and running. So this saves you a lot of time. So are you going to have these available actually somewhere where can people try that? What, what do you mean? I, are you going to have this image or just this container available somewhere so people could try it? Yes, I can make it available okay. if you want to. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so. I mean, just to jump in, uh, 
and we are not talking about performance testing, right? So we are testing. Yeah, we are talking about. Yeah. You, you're on the on the train. You have no internet, and you can just develop on your yeah, application and then yeah, compile yeah, it. Stuff. Okay. So it's uh, very nice to. Okay. So um, it would be nice if we could use these images to just tag them, throw them on our HPC production system, and run them, just in the way I run the container on my local setup. So just Tell, tell the scheduler, take this Docker container, run it, and run this application inside of it. This would be pretty nice. So, um, in this case, I would, have, uh, I would have the application bundled inside of the actual Docker container. So, um, I, can, I can just take the container, say, run, run it, and it will be run on, on the production system. But there are multiple issues that uh, emerge from this use case. And these are some of the problems my master thesis tries to solve. So, for example, we need um, proper scheduler integration. I'm working uh, with Slurm, and so Slurm would be, uh, must be able to pull the image, to run the image, make the setup, make the network setup, make the I.O. setup, uh, if the container is done, stop it, gather, gather the information and remove the container. <laughs> so this, is, this can be achieved through, for example, uh, some sort of plugins. So Slurm knows how to handle these containers. Um, is there a question about this? No? So let's talk about security. If you're running a Docker container in your production system, the user who runs this Docker container is equivalent to root. So um, you maybe or normally you would only want to have trusted users execute your, uh, your, your containers or modify your containers, you would say. And all the images on, on a node are visible to all other users who have access to the Docker daemon. So, for example, if you have some, I don't know, private data, confidential data running some simulations you don't want everybody to see, everybody else on the node can look into your image. And, um, yeah, so only make these Docker images accessible to trusted users, which in a big corporate environment is, well, not practical. So, I came up with maybe three ideas to solve this issue for, um, for accessing the Docker daemon without the need of being a trusted user and using root. There are, um, like I uh, said before, there are, uh, you, won't be, you shouldn't be able to execute system commands or mount certain uh, directories in your, in, in, uh, into your container. So, for example, you could say, I'm writing a custom Docker client um, who doesn't have these features, and it will run with uh, set UID to uh, make black clients or, or um, um, uh, the, the official Docker client not able to run with the Docker socket. So when you execute it, you get maybe a different group, group ID, get access to the Docker socket, and you can run it. Second one would be, you're writing some sort of proxy software that filters out your run commands, checks for certain volumes to be mounted, ports to expose, and you have, would have this proxy filter out those commands, deny the, ex, uh, deny the execution if you're violating some sort of rules, or the third solution would be, um, which I think would be the best for everyone, if you modify the official Docker daemon and Docker client for make um, for make it possible to define some sort of security rules. So, who knows what Docker plugins are? Did anybody heard heard of them? Docker plugins, um, and at the moment exists for volumes and for network, I think. So, a Docker plugin, for example, lets Docker talk to ZFS or diff or, or cluster FS. There, there's a plugin you can know and Docker knows how to handle these file systems. This is called a volume plugin. So why don't make, make Docker able 
to write some sort of security plugin to enforce your own security rules on top of the Docker daemon and the Docker client. This is, this is what I'm currently working on and I'm currently trying to figure out how to do this in, um, in the best manner. I don't know, has any one of you, um, except from having one trusted user verifying all of the images, have, has a different setup to secure their production environment or thought about something like this? Yeah. yeah we, we, we have thought of several options and uh, actually we are going for the middle street uh, in, in our solution too. Okay, really so to hear what you were. Uh, yeah. So I tried I so I, I thought um, maybe utilizing the this uh, plugin um, capability that Docker already has and add security plugins to it. <coughs> and if possible it would be really nice if, if these changes could be get merged upstream if they want to have it. So this is, um, in, um, as part of our master thesis, I try to get as many changes um, back to the community as I can if they want to have them. So I'm, I'm opting for the third option and I will see if I have any success with it. Any more questions about Docker security or the execution for the root users? But why, why Docker? Why Docker requires to be a root by design? Why cannot be like a Docker user that has a, a normal privilege, like any daemon that we can start in Linux and have special access to some system code if required? Why is it built? I think we are we are we are close to getting in a red hole because <laughs> security you can take you can talk about security over the ages. I mean, uh, the Docker or the Docker concept is you have a, a server which you which you say okay start this daemon start this container start this container so you have a central agency like a like uh, and this requires the, the daemon right but you have also run C or from the core team or core OS team. And they have this uh, Docker or container system as a, as a serverless um, serverless version of it, where you just say run a container and you run the container out of your process that you're just invoking. You don't have a central server that starts and stops containers, which is maybe more applicable to to HPC some HPC environments, mm -hmm. I think. But, uh, as said, I mean we can. I think this is a functionality, but that's not an answer anyway. Yeah, but we, we should talk after the after the after the. Okay, the, 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 the not think about the HPC when the build up. I I think. Yeah, that's yeah. an important point. I don't know. I um that uh, it's actually a good question, and I don't have given it so much thought. But I think one problem would be Docker container are allowed to do um, a wide variety of actions. So you would have um, to give the user who runs the, the, the Docker daemon access to all these specific system calls, like mounting file systems, doing uh, exposing ports, and um, doing the whole network setup. So the, the, the problem is, if you give the user all these access rights that he, he actually needs to set up the Docker container inside the, inside the HPC environment, um, maybe there's some way to break out of it, or there are so much rights that it doesn't make a huge difference. So um, I will I will look into this. Um, it's it's a good idea, but I would think um, having 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 filter mechan mechanisms to filter out <laughs> certain certain options uh, or options or um, or uh, you know, not. To, to restrict the to restrict the, to to restrict um, the way and the way in which they work um, would be sensible, but I will look into it. Thank you. So then um, another point uh, I think about is uh, reproducibility. Um, Docker is really nice in in, in, in in this point because you can export the image to disk with just a simple uh, command line, you just say docker export contain the running uh, container, I can gzip it, and it's on your disk, and you can re-import it 
and rerun it. And if you want to, to persist your changes, you can just take the file, export it to tape or store it in your data archive. And if somebody asks you, hey, can you show me how you produced uh, these, how, how you produced uh, these uh, results, you just say here, you have the, the exported Docker image, import it, have a look at it, and you'll see how I, uh, how I did it. Is anybody working on reproducible re reproducibility with Docker? So, <laughs> so do you have any any um, reports you can give for how you work with it? What are there are there some problems? Actually, we'll talk about it. Ah, okay. So we will get we will get to it. Nice. Okay. So, are there any more questions? Yeah. So going back to the security slide, uh, I don't want to go. I'm not going to go down the route. Down the route. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so for the, for the middle route that you have laid out there, yeah, uh, I was just curious to know what you have in mind that the, the security proxy that's going to happen, the security checks that are going to happen, uh, will it happen at the Docker file level or at the Docker image level? Um, what do you check exactly? This is um, the first right. checks. Um, the, 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 uh, look. This setup is for the actual execution so the, you do, of, you of the runtime checks. Yeah, right. Okay. This this will be first runtime checks. Then the next step would be to add statical analysis to the Docker files to disallow certain actions. Okay. <coughs> I, think, I think next year we might opt for a longer workshop to have all these different yes. approaches. I mean, we can. Fill the whole week with it, I think. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay.